Hello, everybody, and welcome back once again to the Mana Cave. My name is Ed. My name's Travis. This is the second time we're recording this intro because um, it's harder to hear us when someone doesn't turn the microphone on before we start recording. So uh, luckily we didn't get too far. I had just got to the point where I was showing my hand, and that's when I realized the microphone was not turned on. So today we are continuing on with the second round of the Guild Kit Showdown, and it is going to be Azorius versus Orzov. Uh, now, I got to play both of these decks in the first round. Yeah. So I got to choose which deck I played in the second round. Now, I personally think Orzov has a better chance here, but Azorius is the color combination I sort of fell in love with first in Magic. So I decided to go with that. Uh, what do you think about Orzov so far? I do. I like the Orzov deck. There's a lot of uh, sacrificing and you know getting benefits of that. But I, I think the Azorius deck has a lot of Control, tempo, tap down, you know. Yeah. Even a few counter spells, which <laughs> a blue deck should have. Yes. So I do actually give the, the favor of myself to Azorius, not to oh, sound really? bitter. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Do. Oh, good. Oh, so nice. We, we're both playing the decks that yeah. we think is going to lose this time. So we're going to try extra hard here. So uh, we're like mopey teenager. Who's going to win? Now, before we go on into the actual game, I want to talk a bit about the wild card spots that are going to be coming up. Because the next match that you guys are going to see is going to be a match that's going to determine wildcard spot number two. That is going to be the match between Rakdos and Izzet. So these two are going to determine wildcard spot number two, which is going to take place in round three. So basically, the winner of this is going to get a bye after that yeah. into round three. And the reason why these two decks are going to get that special treatment is because they seem to be right now by far the most popular requested ones in the comments section. So I'm, I'm excited actually to see this as a matchup as well. Yeah. Um, you would be playing the Rakdos because you've played it before, and I'd be playing the Izzet one because I, I played that one before. So uh, that seems to be like a very, very interesting matchup yeah. between the two of them. And I think, I think these both went two out of threes as well too, right? I don't think Ra I think Rakdos and Gruel is a rough night. Oh, I think that's right. Too. Oh, and two, I, th I think. Yeah, but Rakdos was. I think Rakdos yeah. didn't quite get a fair shake. It, it um, had some, but that's that's the game. Yeah, that, that, I mean that happens, right? Whereas uh, the Izzet one took off or stood off against the Golgari deck, which was just coming out like with yeah. everything going right for it. Yeah, especially that one game was an insane <laughs> board state. No matter what you did. I think you had like three zero eight blockers that didn't even matter. Yeah. Oh, like, that's right too. That yeah. was in, yeah, that was crazy. So I'm mean, I'm super excited to be able to play Is it again. So I thank you guys for voting for this one. And I know you definitely wanted to play Rakdos uh, yeah. at least one more time out of this. So once again, that's going to be the next uh, episode of the Mana Cave. Is going to be these two decks squaring off, but that's going to determine wild card spot number two. Now, wild card spot number one of the two competitors, one has already been determined, and that is Gruel. Gruel received probably the most unfair treatment. In the very first match. A lot of sympathy in those comments. Like. Yes. There were there were a number of mistakes. And one of the biggest ones was... Some of which I caught and I sort of explained during the video. But uh, one of the biggest ones, which I didn't catch before uh, releasing the video, was the extort triggers. Extort triggers when you cast a spell. And I was taking extra advantage of a creature that I cast and its abilities that you can only be used once it's on the battlefield. Yeah. And I shouldn't have been able to do that. And there was a few other things as well, too, which gave Gruul kind of an unfair shake. So Gruul essentially is going to get an automatic entry or a possibility of being in the next wild or being the next wild card spot, wild card spot number one. Between those, uh, against Gruul is going to be either Simic or Boros. Now, Boros has received a lot of support in the comment section as well, too, but it was also the very first deck that we played, I think. No. Uh, or it was, it was the first second loss. match. My first loss. Yeah, so it was the second match of yeah. the Guild Kit Showdowns. But it did go three games against the Demir one. Yes. Best of yeah. three against Demir. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Simic was the most recent loss in the Guild Kit Showdown of the first round. So it hasn't had a whole lot of chance for people to sort of like get behind it and support it. So from here on out, in the comments section, when it comes to the playoffs, determining who's going to be the next wildcard spot, I want you guys to let me know whether you'd prefer to see Boros or Simic. So any comments that were done before, I'm going to completely ignore, and I'm only going to look at comments. And this goes as well, too, if you want to, like, you know, uh, give me a shout-out on Twitter or something like that. I'll take all those into account, but I'm only going to take them into account from, from this video forward. Yeah. And whoever wins the popular vote there is going to square off against Gruul, and that's going to determine wild card spot number one. And wild card spot number one is going to be against Selesnya. 
Oh, that was an awful lot to have to go through a second time because the, but at least this time you'll hear me because the microphone's on. So that's pretty nice. Yeah. Travis, Yo. do you have anything else you'd like to say before we kick things off? No, that was, that was a lot. Yeah, that was quite a bit. I'm wearing a Nope shirt. So for once I'm actually sort of, uh, wearing something to go along with what I'm playing. And, uh, you're, you're wearing a Winnipeg Jets shirt, yeah. which actually the symbol is, has some similar elements to the Orzov symbol. Circular and there's spikes. Yeah, 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 I guess so. Right? Yeah. Circle and spikes. That's all you need. It's, yeah, it's practically like the Jets are part of the Orzov house or guild. Red, white, and blue, the more Jets kind. <laughs> now, uh, we've actually determined, normally we roll on camera, but since we did that during the, um, the I one got, where the microphone wasn't. I got a four. Uh, and actually, yeah, I got a seven. Yeah. So this is a dramatic reenactment of the role, <laughs> or an undramatic reenactment. There we go. So the, dang it. Yeah. So I get to play first. We've determined our opening hands. Neither of us had a mulligan. Yeah. And I am now going to show you guys my opening hand. All right. So let's try to get these cards together so that everyone can see them, or at the very least I can see them, so I can add the graphics. And uh, there you go. So this is my opening hand. I don't think it's the worst. It may not be the best ever, but uh, I think. I think it gives me a good shot. I think it gives me a good shot. Travis? You. I bow my head to you, sir. All right, there would be my curved out opening hand. <laughs> so I may need a little luck for things to hit the ground smoothly, but I think I think it's going to happen. Yeah? Yeah. I, th I think so. Well, I'm going to try to stop it from right. happening. I'm going to try to say nope to everything you do. Try to control me? Yes. That's going to be my goal. That's going to be my goal. Okay. So to kick things off, I'm going to play an island and pass the turn to you. Okay. I'm going to draw a card. And then I'm going to simply play an Orzov Guildgate and enters tapped. I can tap for black or white. Nice. Pass back. Right. Okay. Draw. Draw one card, Ed, not two. <laughs> That's cheating. I'm going to tap this island for no apparent reason, and I'm going to play an Azorius Chancery. Uh, enters the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. For a second, so, I look at you're picking that one back up. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mind games. <laughs> exactly. That would be a hell of a way to start the game. I'm going to return the island to my hand. I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, because I was not on the draw, so I do not have to discard. And I'm going to pass the turn to you, sir. Untap. Draw. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a similar-ish move. Okay. But I think I'm going to tap first for one white mana. To cast the Martyred Wazalka, it's a 1-1 spirit without flying. All spirits have flying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I can pay one white, comma, sacrifice a creature. Target creature can't attack this turn. Oh. That, that can come in handy against a Gruul deck. Um, it, I don't know about the, yeah. Yeah, that one. It definitely came in handy when I was playing the Orzhov deck. So. Uh, and then I will play an Orzhov Basilla, enters tapped, and what enters uh, return, unfortunately, a tap land to my hand, which is a little bit painful, but I have a 1-1. Yeah. And because you played a creature, you don't, you have, you don't have uh, too many cards in hand. I have exactly yeah. seven. I love that Sexy you count seven. and don't and don't make eye contact with your cards. Bad it's luck like, to make eye contact yeah, with like, your cards. You're either looking at the people or you're looking at me. What's up, man? <laughs> my turn? You. Okay. No haste on my one one non flying spirit. No haste. No haste. What a what a horrible state of affairs. I remember back in the day when you used to have one one spirits with haste. Not anymore. I'm going to And fly. Life and life flying. Lifelink. And vigilance. Wow. And death touch. Um, I'm going to play an island, which we all knew I had. I'm going to tap for three, including a blue and a white. And I'm going to cast the Court Hussar. It is a 1-3 that'll can knight. It's got vigilance. And when it enters the battlefield, I look at the top three cards in my library. Then put one of them into my hand and the rest on the bottom of my library in any order. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless white was spent to cast it. And it was. So I don't have to sacrifice it. I'm going to look at the top three. Oh, ooh! I'm gonna look at my hand, see if I'm gonna make a horrible mistake. I'm going to put this one into my hand, and I'm going to put those on the bottom of my library in any order. And um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards still in hand, still a full mitten, and I'm gonna pass the turn now to you. Okay, tap. Draw. Not, not what I was hoping to draw. Uh, so I think the best route here is to once again play that Orzhov Guildgate. Why couldn't it be the most life gaining one? And, um. And, um. 
think, to maximize manners and everything. Tapping for black and white to play the Vizkupa Guild Mage. He's a 2-2 human wizard. I got this black and white, so one black, one white. I can spend a black and white and one. Target creature gains life link until end of turn, and I can do the same casting cost, the black, white, and one. Whenever you gain life this turn, each opponent loses that much life. I will pass back to you. Pass back to me. Okay. Untap. Draw. I will play an Azorius Guildgate. If there's a battlefield tapped, I can tap for white or blue. Hmm. A 1-1 one, one, and a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, so if they double block, they can kill my knight. I'm going to tap one blue, and I'm going to cast Judge's Familiar. It is a 1-1 one, one flying bird creature, and I can sacrifice it, counter target, instant, or sorcery spell, unless, it, unless it's a controller, pays one. What? Yeah. But pays one. You, you can get it. All you do is pay one. And then, you know, so basically it's going to make... Sacrifice. You don't have to pay anything to sacrifice. You don't have to tap it to sacrifice it? No. You just sacrifice it to counter target spell? Yeah. Any spell? No. Counter target instant or sorcery spell. Oh, okay, unless okay. it's controller pays one. Oh. Not not creature. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was a little flabbergasted. It's it? cray cray. Um, these are a term I never use. I don't know why I use it there. Uh, I'm now going to pass the turn to you. Because I was kind of freaking out. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I have a mana curve plan. <laughs> I had a mana curve plan. Okay. So what is pretty plainly obvious to everybody now is Travis, of course, hasn't played land yet. So, and maybe this is what, turn four? Uh, turn, yeah, I'm not sure. It'll be on screen, yeah. but uh, we, we don't keep track of that so, actually uh, outside of editing. Yeah, so no, I missed the land drop. So Yeah, I think it's turn four. Yeah. Because I played three lands, but one of them was a, a bounce land. Yeah. So I have a maximum of three mana. Yep. Could do something, but I think the smart choice is take a turn off, tap two for the Orzhov Signet. Yeah. Now, I kept a land hand with two lands because I had the Signet, hoping that I would need it. You know, it's like a Signet. Yeah. Always hope you have one and never, better to have one and not need one. <laughs> The need one, not have one. Have one exactly. It's a signet. Yeah. That's exactly what we're talking about. What else are we talking about? That's the flavor text on the card, too. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> oh, man. Um, but I, I can still, this turn, because it's an artifact, but not a creature, I can still tap this to add two. Yes, you could. Yeah. If you so choose. I choose not to. I choose to pass <laughs> okay. to you. Because, um, well, but that doesn't cost you anything. I, oh. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But once again, instance and sorcery. Yeah, doesn't, no, but. It doesn't count for creatures, yeah. There we go. Back okay. To <laughs> Back to me? Okay. So I'm going to untap. But at least that would get it, get it off the board. I don't even have to tap it and sacrifice yeah, it. So because it's got flying, I can start swinging in because that guy doesn't have flying, right? No, it's a spirit without flying. Yeah. But no matter what, I, I have this theory on counter spells. You just, you got to burn through them. Like, just go into them head first. Yeah. Because just... you're not going you know, to, what, what are you not going to do? Not play the game? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's... They're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, does it? What? Uh, My advice? To not, to not, no, to not yeah. play the game. Yeah. You know. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I played the island. I'm going to move to combat. Okay. I'm going to swing in with my 1-1 one, one flyer. I have no flying blockers, and I choose not to do anything else. Okay. So ping down to just 19? Yes. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, tap for 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, within that, I'm tapping for 2 blue and two white, and then one of whatever, to cast for five, Ouch. Esperia the Inscrutable. It is a 3-6 legendary creature sphinx. It's got flying, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, choose a card name. That player reveals their hand. If a card with the chosen name is revealed this way, search your library for a creature card with flying, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Ow. So the first time, it's a blind guess. But the second time, having already seen your hand, unless you play the card that I... Unless you pl or play out your hand, I, I, chances are I'm going to be able to name another card. Now that's with a normal player with a normal memory. I've got a horrible memory. I have pen and paper somewhere. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to write it down or put it on my phone or something. <laughs> so, Anyways, that is my entire turn. And I'm going to pass the turn now to you. All right. Draw for turn. Come on, man. Come on, man. 
Um, okay, so this taps for two. Yep. Tap that, tap this for two. For four mana, one black, one white, to cast. 1,000 Lashes. Enchant creature, enchant creature can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. At the beginning of the upkeep of enchanted creature controller, that player loses one life. This really kind of killed uh, Gruul, I believe. You, you know what? You know what the most insane thing is, and I wish I had said it? That was the card I was going to name, because it's the one card I remember the name of in that deck. Yeah. So, it's oh man. Pa painful name. <laughs> but it's a, it's a great card. So I, that's in my upkeep that's going to happen every time, right? Yeah. Man, I can't tag a block. So you basically killed its, its, its big nasty ability as well, too, right? So Yeah. Now, <laughs> um, I have a 1 3 blocker. So I can attack with this and they bounce. I can attack with both. You block this, it dies. I think I'm still going to just hold off this turn. I don't love doing nothing. Okay. That's like two turns in a row of. Well, that's not nothing. That's No, that's not nothing. And it, it being an enchantment versus a sorcerer instant, I was actually able to cast it. Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll just pass back to you. Okay, so untap, upkeep. I'm going to take one damage or lose one life. So I'm down to 19 now from the 1,000 lashes. Do I gain a life? I don't think I do, do I? Um, a player, loses creature control, player loses loses one. Yeah, so what a crappy card, man! I don't gain a life. <laughs> that's that was an all star card last time too. So it's especially great when you put it on a creature that's already doing damage to you. I'm gonna draw. I'm going to play a planes, which I have not been able to play yet. I've had white sources, I just haven't been able to play a planes. I'm gonna move to combat. Okay. I'm gonna swing in with the one one. I still have no blocker, so I'm taking one down to eighteen. I'm going to tap two white and two blue and cast Sphinx of New Prov. We'll say it's, that's how you pronounce it. It's a 4-3 uh, Flying Vigilant Sphinx and um, spells your opponent's cast that target Sphinx of New Prov cost two more to cast. Ouch. Kind of wish I cast that before him, but that's life. Is it all creatures or just him? Uh, no, no. Well, I see what you're saying. Because, yeah, because, yeah. yeah, you wouldn't have been able to cast. You would have had to choose one of these ones if you would have been able to pay the cost for it. So that, that, <laughs> that's magic for magic. you. That's spirit fingers. Um, I'm going to pass a turn to you now. Uh, untapping. Come on, man. <laughs> He was... Yep, yep, this is all happening, and I'm cool with it. It's all good. Um, okay, I will tap. There are already people writing in the comment section how uh, games of mana screw are no fun. It's it's the game of magic. It's, and, yeah, it's, and, and, I, and the thing is, I don't disagree with them. I 100% don't disagree with them, so. Uh, I could literally tap this to tap that to add two mana <laughs> and have one float, because I only need three to cast the uh, Orzov Pontiff. Uh, he's a human cleric with haunt. So I don't really know haunt by that much. When this creature dies, exile it, haunting target creature. When Orzov Pontiff enters the battlefield or the creature it haunts dies, oh, I see, choose one. So I'm going to just, I can choose my creatures I control get plus one, plus one in turn, or creatures I don't control get minus one, minus one. So that is why I'm choosing that. It is not instant sorcery. That should result in killing that dude, pointing a lot. That's right. And, and keep in mind, they all get minus one, minus one, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. So Judge is familiar, goes to the grave. Uh, he's one, one, and uh, yeah. Sad, but it was a uh, removal that I could cast. Is it flying? No, it didn't no, matter. no, just a, just a one one. Okay. When he dies, he haunts a creature, and then when that creature dies, it's haunting, man. Hang on, what's up? Enters the battlefield, or the creature haunts dies. Okay, yes, so we only get two triggers like that. Okay, well, that did change something. Yes, no, it so <laughs> uh, Court Hussar is now a zero two, and this, the Sphinx of New. Prov is a 3 2 oh, till, the, till the end of turn, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I can. It is smart for Travis Walters to attack here because no matter what, you can either take two, which mm -hmm. I'm doing anyway. I'm not going to be blocking either of those dudes next turn anyway. Yeah. Or, or you throw away a 4 3 flying vigilant creature, right? Yeah. So yeah. it just makes sense. So that's why I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to a combat with my Viscopa, Guild Mage, who I try saying with an accent because I'm cool. <laughs> okay. I'm going to. Can you believe that I haven't gotten a single creature with Afflict yet? Is it Afflict? No, not Afflict. Um, Afterlife. Afterlife. Afterlife, yeah. I, I want to get some spirits going on here. Like, okay. You have, like, all the time. I, like, I sacrifice <laughs> this guy. I create this guy. I will take the two. So I'm down to 17. Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a tapped out Travis there. Okay. My turn? Your turn, sir. 
Okay, so I'm going to untap, and then during my um, upkeep, uh, which I can activate this only during my upkeep, and only once each turn, I'm going to forecast the Sky Hussar. Forecast. Tap two untapped white... Oh, I should also take... Before that, I'm going to take one damage. Sorry, right. I'm going to lose one life, so I'm down to 16. So now, now I'm going to read this. Forecast. Tap two untapped white and or blue creatures you control. Uh, reveal Sky Hussar from your hand and draw a card. So I'm going to tap this one, obviously, because it's not doing anything anyways. And I'm going to tap the, car the Court Hussar because it's either white or blue creatures. And I will reveal this so that you know that yeah. I got it. And I'm going to draw a card and then I'm going to have my regular draw. I'm going to move to combat. Okay. And I'm going to swing in with my 4-3 Flying Vigilant Creature. I have no flying blockers, so okay. I have to take four. Yes. Sucks. Drop down to 14. I'm going to pay two, including one white. And it's an instant, but I'm going to cast it now. Um, summary Judgment. Summary Judgment deals three damage to target tapped creature. If you cast this spell during your main phase, it deals five damage to that creature instead. I'm going to deal it to your 2-2. Two -two. Your 2-2. Two -two. And he goes. He goes far. I'm then going to... Tap a blue and a white and a blue. And I'm going to cast Azorius Herald. Uh, it's a 2-1 spirit creature. It can't be blocked. And when it enters the battlefield, I'm going to gain 4 life. So I'm going to go up, back up to 20. And when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless, you, uh, unless blue was spent to cast it, which it was. Uh, I've got one up. I'm going to pass the turn to you, though. Okay. Untap. Gotta be blooming while kidding me. <laughs> feels so bad, man. As the kids say, feels bad, man. It feels bad. I shouldn't say kids. It's really just people younger than me. So it's not... They don't even have to be kids at this point to be younger than me, so... I think this will work. <laughs> uh, so tapping my Basilla to tap this to add two. To tap that add two more. So there's two white... Two black for four mana. I'm going to tap Consume. Target player sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. You gain life equal to its power. Oh. So he is more powerful than him, unless you got some way to drop his No, power. and the other thing to point out as well, too, is it's target player. Yeah. It's not tar So he's not yeah. targeting the creature, so the, the extra tax doesn't come into effect. Yeah, so that's yeah. going to get rid of that. Man. And I will gain four life. You're mean. Why are you going to be so mean? I'll get the four life back that he just took from me. <laughs> that seems fair in Orzavi kind of way. Okay, so now I'm looking at a two one that can't be blocked anyway, and two one ones that I have. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I'll attack you for one. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to not block. Okay. And I will take one, and I'll go down to nineteen. Makes sense. And yeah, there's my four mana turn. <sighs> back to you, sir. Back to me. Okay, so I'm gonna untap. Um, and then during my upkeep, Don't oh yeah, during life. my upkeep, I'm going to take one, uh, lose one life to start with, and then I'm going to forecast the Sky Hussar, so I'm going to tap two uh, white or blue creatures, uh, it's white or blue, yeah, white and or blue creatures I control, and reveal it, which I did, and then draw a card. How much life have you gained in this game? <laughs> I'm going to draw another card on my regular card draw, and I'm going to put this back in my hand. Uh, I'm then going to... I'm going to play an Azorius Guildgate, enters the battlefield tapped. I'm going to move to combat. Okay. I'm going to swing in with the 2-1 unblockable creature. Can't block unblockable. Trapped to 16. I will then pass the turn to you. Oh, you would. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch me hit my land now and then get countered. Oh, of course it did be that kind of land, too. Oh, yeah. Where's that yeah. field gate enters tab? So I'm still at four. It but... seems like every time I'm just begging for a land, the first land that actually does pop up is one that's going to enter tapped anyways. So. Okay, so uh, I'm going to tap for two, tap that, to tap that for two more, mm -hmm. to cast, tempting nothing, the uh, Basilla Bell Hunt. When it enters the battlefield, if it enters the battlefield, <laughs> each opponent discards a card, then I gain three life. Otherwise, a three, four, non-flying spirit. Okay. Uh, that, that is going to resolve. Exactly. I am going to... Four mana. Um, 
I'm going to discard Dubscape. It's an enchantment, and whenever a, a player casts a non-creature spell, counter that spell. That player creates X, 1-1 one, one white and blue creature tokens with flying, where X is the spell's converted mana cost. Now, the reason why I didn't cast this enchantment at any point is because I, I have air superiority with this deck. I'm fairly certain. Like, you don't have a ton that has flying, I think, in that deck from what I remember. Uh, if I can get some afterlife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I thought, so I thought this would actually benefit you way more than it's actually going to um, be negative. So okay. I, I went up one life. Yes. Okay. Uh, I guess I go to combat because I'm not doing these two guys at this point anyway. Did you go up one life or did you gain three life? Three life. Pardon me. I was up to okay. 19. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, so swing in with the two one ones. Or to keep him back, hoping to trade and get his minus one thing to take him out. <laughs> See, yeah, because it's one life versus one life versus... Yeah. Okay, so yes, I'm just going to attack you for one with this dude. Okay, so I'm going to go down to 17. All right, and I have to pass back to you while I start thinking what I'm going to do with my five mana. On your end step, okay. I'm tapping for two blue and a white, and then I'm going to tap the Chancery for two more. And three three additional floating in total. So the, the Chancery and the Guildgate for an additional three. I'm going to cast Sphinx's Revelation. It's an instant. You gain X life and draw X cards. So in this case, X value was three. So I'm going to go up to 20. And I'm going to draw three cards. Two. Three. Okay. So now I will untap. Life gain. <laughs> oh, that goes to the graveyard. Untap everything, up cap, up, up, up cap, up okay. keep. So nineteen, I lose a life. I'm down to nineteen. I will then uh, forecast the hussar and tap these two down to draw a card, and then I will draw another card. That goes back to my hand. Those stay tapped. I'm going to pay two blue. And then two of whatever. And I'm going to cast uh, Sphinx of Foresight. It's a 4-4 four, four, uh, flyer. And I did not have this in my opening hand. This is the one that I forgot the last time I played oh, this. this uh, you may reveal guy. this card from your opening hand if you do Scry 3 at the beginning of your first upkeep. So I, I didn't have it in my opening hand, so it doesn't matter. And uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, Scry 1. So as long as it's out there at the beginning of my upkeep, I get to Scry 1. Darn Scry guy. <laughs> I'm then going to play an Azorius Chancery, which is going to enter tapped, and I bounce a land back to my hand, so I'm going to bounce this island back to my hand. I'm then going to tap the untapped Chancery I have for two, bring out an Azorius Signet, which is basically the same as yours. I pay one, and then I can tap it for white and blue. I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six cards in hand. <laughs> <laughs> so many cards. Um, and then... And then... I'm just going to pass the turn... Oh wait, no, I'm gonna, I am gonna. haven't done combat. This is still my first main phase. Uh, first main phase. Uh, I'm going to move to combat. Okay. I'm going to swing in with the 2-1 unblockable. 2-1 unblockable drops me to 17. Okay. Can't believe I almost forgot to attack. It's crazy. Uh, I will then pass the turn to you. You're doing so much of everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Swamp! There we go. There we go. And that's coming uh, after the guild gate from last turn as well, too. So, yeah. Big mana swing for you. And it's going to be a big counter right here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, tapping my newly found swamp and the Orzov for two, three, four, five, and six for uh, enchantment called Ethereal Absolution. Oh. Creatures I control get plus one, plus one. Creatures my opponents control get minus one, minus one. I can tap a black, a white, and two of anything, four mana total, to exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. If it was a creature card, I created one, one flying. White and black spirit creature token. That is not getting countered, my friend. This, however, is going to go to the graveyard. The Azorius Herald is going to go to the graveyard. Okay. So your Sphinx is now a 3-3, three, three, and yes. my Bacilla Bell Haunt is now a 4-5. So let me know before you move to combat. I'm moving to combat. Okay, so I'm going to tap this to tap my Signet for white and blue. And I'm going to cast Dispose, tap target creature, draw a card. It's part of a split card. And I'll tap that guy there, because that guy's gotten crazy. I'm going to draw a card. He is tapped. Everything is tapped. <laughs> 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 
Okay. Pass back to you. My turn? Okay, that was a tap out. <laughs> okay, so untap. Upkeep. First trigger. I'm going to uh, take or lose one life. I'm going to go down to 18. I'm then going to forecast the uh, Hussar, tapping these two down to draw a card. I'm then going to do my regular draw, and this comes back into my hand. I'm going to play a Plains. I'm going to tap for one, two, three, four, five in total. And this time I'm actually going to cast the Sky Hussar. So it is a 4-3 flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, untap all creatures I control. So I'm going to untap these two. Then I'm going to tap this planes to tap my signet for two, tap a guild gate for one more, and I'm going to cast Unbreakable Formation. Creatures you control gain indestructible until the end of turn. Addendum. If you cast this spell during your main phase, which I am, put a plus one plus one counter in each of those creatures, and they gain vigilance until the end of turn. So, uh, plus one, plus one, that's bad, plus one, plus one. And they all gain indestructible and vigilance. Now, that can still end up haunting. Yeah, but it can't block a flyer. Yeah. Because he doesn't have flying. No, it does, that doesn't have flying, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's still, it's, it's vigilant and indestructible, so I could potentially, because you only have two... 2-2 two, two blockers up now, right? Because of the this yeah. is given a 2-2. Two, two. I will move to combat. Okay. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do a scry at the beginning of my upkeep, but that trigger's well past, so forget that. Uh, I'm going to swing in with the Sphinx and also the Court Hussar. Okay. So I am going to uh, block there. Okay. Then it's... So you're going to go damage. You're going to take five. Four. I think it's minus one. So he's a... Oh, that's right, too. So basically yeah. these these, these, these counters. counters are essentially negated, right? So, yeah. okay, so you're going to take four. So I still got up to 13, though. Yes. Um, these. This is going to live, yeah. obviously, because yeah. it's indestructible. That's going to die, and then you can haunt now. I can haunt? All right, well, I guess I'm, I'm going to haunt the bigger guy, because it doesn't give any bonuses other than the fact I'm going to die. Yeah. So um, I will haunt... This guy, because I'm more likely to blow his ability on himself than a bigger creature. Mm -hmm. Or a chump, and then get the uh, haunting effect. Okay. And you took you took your four? Yeah, down okay. to, from 17 down to 13. Okay. Uh, i got two up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass the turn to you. Oh, boy. Can I, can I look at the haunter guy again? The yep. ball too? Sorry, this guy in tabs. Okay, so now it's now it triggers when the, the creature it's haunting dies. Okay, I got you. And you put it on a creature that can be sacrificed at any time too, so that's pretty good. So amazing with these the mana curve on these decks is so high though. Yes, yeah, there are a lot of big cost spells One, two, three, four, and creatures. Five, six. Okay, I guess I'm going to just go all or nothing here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. It'd be nice okay. to have mana up to use it, really, potentially. <laughs> uh, attempting to cast Treasury Thrall. It's a 4-4 with Extort. And uh, whenever it attacks, I may return target artifact, creature, or enchantment card from my graveyard to my hand. Oh, nice. Nice. So it's 4-4. Four, four. And that resolves. It's a 5-5 it's a five five now, right? Not it's a five yeah. Five. yeah. No flying, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm attacking with my 4-5. Five, five. Okay. I will not block. Okay. So I'm going to take 4. Yep. That puts me down to 14. Okay. Tapped out. My turn. Pass back to you. Okay, so untap, upkeep. Two triggers on upkeep. First, I'm going to lose one life. Second, I'm going to get to scry one. So I'll scry one. I'm going to put that on the bottom. And then I'm going to draw, because the hussar is out of my hand, so I can't use its shenanigans anymore. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to play an island. Gotta have that mana. <laughs> I'm running low. I'm running low. Okay, I'm going to move to combat. Okay. And I'm going to swing in with my two flyers. I'm going to swing in with the 4-3, uh, which is a 4-3, because it even go, it's gone up one, it's gone down one. Yeah. Uh, and the Sphinx of Sphor Sphor Sphice. Sphor Sphice? Sphor Sphinx of Four Fight. That is an 8 that I can't even chump at this point. Okay. So I'm going to drop from, because uh, I do my math, down to 5. 13, down to 5. 
I'm gonna tap for seven. So I'm gonna tap the island to tap the, the, the signet for two, is there, three, is there a common? four, five, six, seven. An overcosted common, perhaps? <laughs> and I'm gonna cast um Ugh. Archon of the Triumvirate. Triumvirate. Uh it is a four-five flying creature, and whenever it attacks, detain up to two target non-land permanents your opponent's control, which means until your next turn, those permanents can't attack or block, and their activated abilities can't be activated. That's when it attacks, though. You're at five. I'm going to pass turn two. <laughs> now, I can take out potentially one, but he also has mana and counter spells. Lately. I got four up as well, too, because these are yeah. deceptive, but they are two, two mana each, each land. Okay, so if you have a creature spell in your graveyard, I can yeah. cast four, mm -hmm. tap four, which would be a lot. Um, extort is whenever you cast a spell so that when it couldn't extort off the bat. I've got one, two, I got three creatures in my graveyard. I can create a one one chomper. To possibly chump one of <laughs> them. Alright, I think that's what I to try to survive. I think I have to try well, to see if it even matters. Because there'll still be two guys. I don't have eight mana, so I can't do it twice. I'm gonna Tap that, tap one of these, to a first attempt to cast Mortify. Destroy target creature or enchantment. Ooh. So you're going to destroy your enchantment? No. <laughs> uh, I'm going to target, I guess, the... doesn't really matter, because they're all four power. Minus one, so we'll say the one guy who's currently untapped. Okay. We're going to do that. I'm not going to extort, because I need my one, two... Four mana. Okay, and that's destroy, not exile, right? It is destroy. Target. Okay, yeah. so that's going to the graveyard. Yeah. So now I'm going to. I I could wait to instant speed it, but I'm going to activate the ability to exile a card from the graveyard. Now, since yeah. you asked about it being <laughs> exiled, <laughs> I'm going to choose that. But that, okay, that no, no, guy. yeah, okay. So because you're all like, so you're going to exile the uh, triumvirate. Yeah. Okay. And you you're wondering about the exile. <laughs> uh, so I do get to create a one one. Spirit token. Look at that. Oh, look at that guy. He's flying. So is it just one that you create? Yeah. Okay. Exile target card from the opponent's graveyard. If it was a creature card, you create a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying. Okay. I would have laughed if I misread that. It was a head lifelink. I'm like, <laughs> well, crap. <laughs> um, and now you're completely tapped out, right? I am, so I can't even sacrifice that. Yeah. But in theory, I can chump one flyer, unless, of course, you uh, tap him down, which would be hilarious. <laughs> and I might get away, might, with just taking four. Okay, so we've gone there. Yeah. Now, I can't not... I can't block with these guys. No. 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 So I might as well... Maybe just in case you get a haste guy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm going to attack with my 5-4 and my 4-5. That's 9 damage. 9 damage. And that's got a trigger when it attacks, is that correct? Yeah, so I'm going to return the only legal target, which is my Scopa Guild Mage, to my hand. Okay. Not even the battlefield. So I'd be taking nine. Nine. I will. I will take the nine. I'll go down to four. I think he's got a way of tapping down my spirit. Because <laughs> trust me, he knows how to tap down my spirit. <laughs> All right, tapped out. Pass end back step. to you. Uh, on your end step, I'm going to tap for two. I'm going to cast Dramatic Rescue. Return target creature to its owner's hand. You gain two life. So I'm going to six turn, mana. <laughs> return your spirit. I'm going to gain two life to go up to six. All right. Uh, and then. Uh, Untap, upkeep, two triggers, uh, lose a life, down, down to five, scry, I'll put that on top, draw, uh, move to combat, Yeah, and I'll swing in for six by air. The flyers again. And th the thing is, I just never had mana to do interesting things. I had an angel of despair. If I could have hit seven a little bit sooner, yeah. I would have popped a flyer and then mortified the other one. This And but... once again, like we mentioned a couple of times before, sadly, mana screw is part of magic. This would have been a different game. It's if, also seven mana. Like no, no, but I mean, even something like this, for example, if yeah. you if you had not missed even like a couple of those extra land drops, this could have started been activated more often, and you could have been having chumpers way earlier because that bounce spell was one of the ones I drew later in the game, not early on. So yeah. um, it is unfortunate, but once again, that is sadly sometimes the way it goes. And so I was able to hit four with the Orzov signature. You. <laughs> Came back though, considering the fact that you did like I. If you don't get mana screwed in the next game, it's it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough. Yeah. Um. Because things like like also as well too. Starting off with one thousand uh, lashes. I wanted that on one turn earlier. If I got my land, yeah. it's oh. such. A, I love that card. I yeah. really love that card. 
so yeah, this could have been a completely different game if you if you hadn't been mana screwed. But you still get another opportunity, yep. uh, potentially two opportunities, to end up winning this particular matchup. So we are going to shuffle up, deal ourselves new hands, and we'll be back in just a second. And we are back in the second game of this best two out of three match. Travis, did you have to mulligan? Oh, I sure did not. <laughs> oh, wow. I probably could have. Uh, I mulliganed down to four cards. So uh, I do get to scry. That's awesome. Uh, I don't get to go first. And I am on the draw, so that's going to make it just even a little bit better as well, too. Uh, you get to show first, because you get to go first, and that's the way we do things here on the, on the cave. Booyaka. <laughs> well, you're rhyming and stuff. I felt like yeah. just don't know how to booyaka. <laughs> There's my hand. It's, uh, you, you can see where I, I could have. But I chose not to, to uh, mulligan. <laughs> that was so much information. And there's my hand. <laughs> well, they've been looking at it for like two seconds by the time I said that. So yeah. they, they knew. Okay, well, it's going to be easier to manipulate these cards and show because there's only four of them. Uh, that is my hand. So if you're going to go down to four, this might not be the worst ever. And now we're going to scry and I will show you guys. It's, it's kind of a tough call, folks. It's kind of a tough call. Um, I actually think I'm going to put this on top. And that may be a horrible, horrible mistake, but I think that... Yeah, it may it may pay off. We'll find out. Anyways, Travis. You. You may begin. I will just play in order to have Guild Gate in the past two. <laughs> okay. I'm going to draw my mystery card. Oh, look at that. I will play a Plains and pass the turn to you. And tap. I get my first mystery. Ah, oh, you. Love that guy. Oh, this dude again. <laughs> uh, Planet Plans. Tapping for two for the Imperious. Oh, come on. Oligarch. Oligarch. It's an old lady. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is Betty White. She's 2-1 with Vigilant Human Betty White. Uh, but she has Afterlife 1. So when she dies, she doesn't look like Betty White. She looks I like an old lady. she looks more like uh, B. Arthur. Honestly, if we're, golden, if we're going to golden girl her. Well, come on, man. Do you see this end of the table rising up? <laughs> she doesn't look like B. Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> but she has afterlife, so she can create a spirit, which might give me a chump late in the game. There we go. Uh, I've passed to you with my B. Arthur. Okay, I'm gonna draw. Christmas, uh, Star Wars Christmas special. B. Arthur. <laughs> I'm gonna play an island. I'm gonna tap for two, and I'm gonna cast the Azorius Guild Mage. It's a 2 2 uh, Vettelkin Wizard. I can pay two and a white tap target creature. I can pay two and a blue counter target activated ability. Mana abilities can't be targeted. Um, and that is my turn, and I'm going to pass the turn to you. And tap. Draw. Go to combat. Mm-hmm. Attack it. The absolute truth is, you got to take that. You got to you gotta take I, that block. Yeah, this, I don't even know why I'm thinking about it. I can't, I can't what? block with that. You have to block that. No, no. You're going to keep taking two every turn? Yeah. Or I'll just tap it down next you turn if I have a land. Next turn, yeah. Yeah, you think like that. <laughs> and that'll tap, that'll be your whole turn. It'll be stopping one thing happening. That'll be fine. Okay. I got time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to play an Orzhov Bacilla for my land, and I'll tap the planes. Oh, you return it to your hand. Return the planes to yeah. my hand. Because, yeah. <laughs> That's turn three. Pass back to you. Okay, I'll untap. I'm going to draw. It's not a look of disgust, so it must be decent, bro. Well, I'm going to play a planes. There you go. I'm going to tap for three, and I'm going to cast Hover Barrier. It is a 0-6 defender with flying. It sure is. That's uh, big. <laughs> and I'm going to pass the turn to you, because I'm not going to foolishly swing in with my 2-2. Two -two. Okay. Untap. Draw. Okay. Now, I'm going to play a Swamp. What? He didn't have that before. <laughs> Changes the game, son. It, it does a little for the game. <laughs> you have enough for 1,000 lashes, don't you? I sure do. On a 0-6 wall. <laughs> <laughs> so, I clearly don't have it, because otherwise I would, I would be smiling, <laughs> cracking my knuckles. Oh, yeah. Uh, we are going to... Why would you do that, Travis? That seems silly. Does it? I'll put, I'll put the zero six 6 in front of it. Okay. And you're going to give it Death Touch? No, but it has Vigilance, so why not? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will uh, tap for 4, though. <laughs> I was going to lose that wall. For the Vindictive Vampire. It's a 2-3. Uh, whenever another creature I control dies, Vindictive Vampire deals 1 damage to each opponent. 
and I gain one life. So it's an expensive Blood Artist. Yeah. But actually, uh, each opponent. So I think Blood Artist is target opponent. Yeah. So I mean, it's a little bit better, but it's also four mana for a 2-3. There that's you go. My, that's my turn three. And that's triggered ability, not an activated ability. So yeah. there we go. Untap. Draw. Pass the turn to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's comfortable. Play a plane. Okay. Pre combat. Uh, pre combat. Tap three. Activate this ability. Tap down the oligarch. <laughs> All right, oligarch is tapped down. Um, so I have five mana now. Yeah, let's just do this while we can, I guess. Uh, tapping four, a black and white and two for uh. Tesla Karlov. Tes Tessa? Tesa? Tesa Karlov. I've heard the name said dozens of times. Can't remember now. She's a 2 4 legendary creature, human advisor. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent I control or to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. <sighs> creature tokens I control have vigilance and life. The synergy! Creatures you control have vigilance and life link? Creature tokens I control. Oh, creature tokens you control. Yeah. I was about to get sad there. Need to just or more sad, I should like say. A... Okay, uh, that was four. Hang on, that was like four mana, so it's just gonna be untapped. Because it's one, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. One, one white. Pass back to you. Pass back to me. Untap. I won't bother with that. Draw. I will pass the turn back to you. Tap. Draw. Play that. <laughs> all right. We all know my theory on counter spells, right? Yeah. Walk right into it. Go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four. Ethereal absolution again. Oh no. Uh, okay. Um yuppers, that's gonna resolve. Okay. So creatures I control get plus one plus one creatures he controls get minus one minus one. So there's only a zero five wall now. Yeah. Actually it's a minus one five wall. Yeah, it's a, it's a, and that actually is important in certain things as well, too. So it's a yeah. minus one, five wall, and this is a one, one. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go to combat. Um, I will... I'm going to tap two. And I'm going to cast a Dramatic Rescue. Return target creature to its owner's hand. You gain two life. So I'm going to return that to your hand. So. And I'm going to gain two life, so I'm going to go up to 20. And now you may declare attack. So, oh, it doesn't need to tap. So they're both three power now, right? Yes. Okay, so it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. I will put that in front of that, though. And then damage? Damage. Okay, so these just bounce okay. off each other, and I take three, so I'm down to 17. Yes, sir. Pass back to you. Pass back to me. It's a good tempo Draw. play, though. You know, test is a back of my hand. I'll pass to you. <laughs> One white for the martyred Vasulka again. Okay. Now 2-2. Two, two. And driving straight into that. <laughs> for uh, Tessa Karlov. Alrighty, that resolves. Redeployed. That re that uh, does in fact redeploy. So that's a uh, one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. and one for that. Okie dokie. Uh, go to combat. Pre-combat, tap for three, including one white, and I'm going to tap down your oligarch. Tap down. Okay. Who is it? Three, four. Three, four. I'll block, hoping you don't have a one one cost white spell. Nope. Okay. So then they bounce off each other. Sure. And pass back to you. I read this person. I mean this instant sorcery and or enchantment. Okay, I'm going to untap. I'm going to look at the board here. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You know what? I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do this because I I need to get something going here, and I need cards for it. I'm going to forecast the Sky Hussar 
uh, to tap two untapped white or blue creatures I control. And then I'm going to draw a card. And then I'm going to return that to my hand. I'm going to do my regular draw. I will play a planes. Finally, <laughs> play a planes. Man, I have such a, a horrible choice here. Um, yeah, you know, I got to risk this because I'm I'm not getting anything without any more cards, specific types of cards. I'm going to tap for four on my main phase, and I'm going to cast Sphinx's Insight. Um, instant, draw two cards. However, it has addendum. If you cast this spell during your main phase, which I am, you gain two life. So I'm going to draw two cards and gain two life. So I'm going to draw two. Two. Life gain always good. And I gain two life to go up to 19, but I'm looking at a ridiculous crackback because I've already played a land this turn. I'm tapped out completely. Travis, do your worst. It is now your turn. On your end step. Oh, no! I'm going to tap away. Okay. To activate her ability, sacrifice a creature. Target creature can't attack this turn. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. We'll say your wall can't attack. Okay. It's going to be funny. <laughs> I'm actually going to sacrifice her. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So we have triggers and doubling triggers and stuff to... Yeah. In fact. So... Um, when she dies, I'm going to create a 1-1 one, one spirit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to create two 1-1 one, one spirits because it's going to trigger twice. Yeah. So I get two off that. Uh, whenever another creature I control dies, uh, Vindicating Vampire deals one damage to each opponent, and I gain one life. So That's going to trigger twice. twice. Okay. So I go up to 22. I go down to 17. Imperious B. Arthur. <laughs> These are now 2-2 two, two, Flying Vigilant Lifelink Spirit. Yes. Because creatures I control have Vigilance and Lifelink, and creatures I control with tokens have Vigilance and Lifelink. And mm -hmm. tokens plus one. Okay. Untap. And that was all on my end step as well, too. So these no longer have summoning sickness come your turn. So yeah. I, think that, I think that ends me. Uh, I don't think there's that much power on the board, but let's see what I can do about that. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be a jerk. <laughs> um, hmm. Actually, maybe. Uh, how do I want to spend this mana? One, two... Three. I'm going to well, actually just one, two. One, two for a black and white to cast the Viscopa Guild Mage. Now, I'm going to uh, one, two, and three to activate its second ability, which is not a tap ability. So I can do that the turn it comes out. Yes. So whenever I gain life this turn, each point loses that much life. Oh, that's going to do it. Yeah. So that's going to help out a lot, I think. As well, too. Now, wait, what's, can, I, can I look at her for a sec? Yeah. Um, if creature. Oh no, that's that's for dying, causing triggers. Okay. Yeah. I thought it doubled every activated or triggered ability, but it doesn't. It's only if it's something dies, right? Okay. Yeah. So we're going to combat. <sighs> okay. So he's these two have vigilance and flying and like yeah, think. and they're two, two twos. twos. Yeah. Two two, three four, and three four. Okay. Or so three five three four. One two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Twelve. Okay, so I think I'm at one at the end of this? No. Okay. I don't think so. Because okay, so what I can do So first things first, right? I take There's a lot going on here, so we should <laughs> slow things down because I'm excited. Okay, so first things first, I am taking twelve. I just want to make sure that I'm not messing this up. One, okay. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so I'm down to five. Then you'll take an additional four. Because whenever I gain life this turn, each point loses one life. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I'll tap one, tap to sacrifice a creature. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I felt like I deserved that because of the uh, you having the mana screw last time. But we do have a third game coming, so it's going to be the third and deciding game, and it's going to start right now. And we're back now. Before we kick off the uh, third game of this best two out of three, a a couple things I'm going to mention here. One. We have already played uh, an initial third game, and the cameras weren't on. And it was a really good game, and full disclosure, Travis won that game. It was, it was probably the best of the three games, or the, uh, at that point, three games that we'd played. We then played a uh, makeup game for that, because obviously we want the cameras on for the third game. And it was uh, a incredibly unsatisfying, underwhelming game, and I won that one. So we are now replaying this game for <laughs> the third game for the third time because I didn't feel that it was a uh, a proper victory at that point. So at this point, Travis has won twice. 
I have won twice. This will be the third and deciding game. The third the, and final third game. Yes, the third <laughs> and final third game. So, but this one we've decided no matter what, no matter what sort of tragedy befalls one or both of us, this will actually be the third My and deck spontaneously combusts and I can't draw a card. <laughs> exactly, that was yeah. That, it was meant to be. <laughs> so, uh, now I did lose... I lost the second game of the original two that we played, uh, so I'm going to still get to go first, and I will show you guys my opening hand. Neither of us mulligan. No. No. Mulligan. Okay. So I'm going to show my opening hand here. Okay. So that's my opening hand. As you can see, it's definitely not the worst. It's not probably the greatest it could be, but it's it's okay. It's uh, mediocre. So, you know, and that's... I've, I've learned to... Solid review like that. <laughs> I've learned to be happy with that in life sometimes, so I'll bow my head now to you, sir. Mediocre is pretty harsh, but uh, <laughs> this is not mediocre. It is just not very exciting, but I can I can get to excitement with this hand. Yeah, that might be more information than I should give away. Wow, but, that's uh, more information than you usually give away. That's, yeah. that's like or I'm Chatty misleading over there. Like I could be totally. I have like an aggro, <laughs> you know, lifelink and aggro, which is a bad combination. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's my turn to start, right? Yes. I'm gonna play a planes. I'm gonna tap that planes. And I'm going to play a Judge's Familiar, which we saw before. The 1-1 one, one flyer that can be sacrificed to make casting instant sorceries a little bit more difficult for you. Pass the turn to you, sir. Flyers. Not to a great start here. <laughs> Why do you have to be flyers? Uh, I will play an Orzhov Guild Gate. Enters tapped, but don't return anything to my hand. Okay. <laughs> Pass to you. Pass to me. So untap. Draw. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to play an Island. And I'm going to move to combat. Yep. Swing in with Judge's Familiar. No block. Down to 19. Going to pay two. A white and a blue. And I'm rhyming two. And it's going to be the Pride of Clouds. It is a 1-1 elemental cat. It's got flying. And it also gets plus one, plus one for each other creature with flying on the battlefield. Which means it is now a 2-2. Two -two. It also has forecast, but we're not going to worry about that because it's on the battlefield now. So there we go. Travis, and you. your turn, sir. I'm going to die to flyers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, play in a swamp. Hmm. Um, yeah, I will tap that swamp and tap that Orzhov thing for a Orzhov. Okay. Oh, okay. Signet. Signet. Yeah. yeah. So, not an, this again, not a very exciting turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my turn? Your turn. Right. Untap. Draw. I'm going to tap for two and cast an Orzhov signet, which is basically the same thing, only in white and blue. So I'm making an Azorius signet. <laughs> Did I say Orzhov? Yeah, but I just said Orzhov signet, so I'm sure you're on the brain. <laughs> also, this has, been, this has been just a comedy of errors this entire recording session, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be saying Cynic by the end of the night. Uh, I'm going to play uh, Orius Chancery. And edge of battlefield tapped. I'm gonna return. I'm gonna return this planes to my hand. Travis, you. I'm gonna to move to combat now yeah, <laughs> because uh, I almost passed the turn for some strange reason. So I'm gonna swing in for three. I'll drop three down to sixteen. Okay, and now I'm gonna pass the turn to you. Tap. I'm so weirdly flustered Draw. now. It's... Okay, uh, I will play a swamp. Okay, uh, I will tap that. And that, and that. To have four mana, one of them being white. For Swandering Tide. <laughs> okay, now, if, if I'm not sure, once again, I, you definitely didn't see the game that the cameras were on, but I'm not yeah. sure if you're going to see the next game. Uh, Smothering Tide in both of them, and the, the game that was super crazy, that was a that was an amazing card. So, But sadly, you're going to have to read it off this time, because okay. most people probably haven't seen it yet. So for four mana total, one white, three of anything, whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two. If the player doesn't, I create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap this sacrifice, tap sacrifice artifact, add one mana of any color. So it... He can either, when he draws a card, he has to basically add a tax of two per card, or per drawing action, I guess. And uh, if he does, doesn't, I get uh, I get treasure. Yeah. And the, the one thing is, I do get to draw first, though. Yeah. And then make the decision. So I do get some information on it. So, so once again, not <laughs> exciting. No, but still, it can, but, I mean, it made a huge impact, the game that no one saw, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, pass two. My turn? Okay. And now I'm going to draw. 
Uh, I'm going to uh, tap the island and tap the signet to pay for two. So no matter what, it helps with tempo, but three power in the air doesn't help much with me. I'm going to play an Azorius Chancery and return to this island to my hand. I'm then going to move the combat. Here we go. I'm going to swing in for three by air. See, this, this is what kills me with this deck. I dropped down to 13. I will then pass the turn to you. Okay. Untap. Plane. Boom. Let's see if I can do some interesting things here. Be interesting if I had more mana. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to tap for one white. Now remember, you do have the signet as well, too. Yeah, that's I've got to figure this out so I get... Sure. Because I'm going to float mana here. Okay. Okay, tap that so I have one white and one black. That was a tap. So, one white and one black, and tap that for... The Ministrant of Obligation, Flux 2, saw it last time. Okay. Okay, and then... Oh, no, they didn't. Oh, yes. yeah, right yeah, it's yeah a, sorry. It's a 2-1 with Afterlife 2. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to tap a black, just one black at this point, to cast the Plague Osalka. Oh. So, what I'm going to do now, because I, I can tap a black, it's a 1-1 one, one spirit. Mm -hmm. I can tap a black, sacrifice a creature, a target creature gets minus one, minus one to the end of turn. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay. We're going to sack this to give that thing minus one, minus one to the end of turn. Okay. So this is going to die. This is going to die. That's going to die. I'm this gonna, is going to go back down to a one, one. I'm going to create two one, one flyers. What? what? <laughs> and uh, that did stuff that turn. I'm all tapped out. Oh my goodness. I pass back to you. Okay. So I'm going to untap. I'm going to draw. I am not going to pay. See, you will get a treasure token. I might as well attempt to do that right now, just in case something else happens. Yep. So um, I will pay a black, sacrifice, pay, or sacrifice this, mm -hmm. pay a black, sacrifice a creature, pair a creature with my minus one, minus Send that to the grave. Okay. I am then going to... That man was burning a hole in my pocket. I had to get to spend it. I'm going to pay four, uh, and then I'm going to cast Skymark Rock. It is a 3-3 bird. It's got flying, and whenever uh, Skymark Rock attacks, you may return target creature defending player controls with toughness two or less to its owner's hand. Um, I mean, it, it was sad to let the, the Pride of Clouds go, but I didn't have the mana to tap down to prevent the tithe and still get this out. So, um, I had to let it go. I had to let it go. I'm now going to... I'm going to play an Azorius Guildgate and pass the turn to you. Okay. Go to combat. Go to combat. Swing on your spirit. Swing my spirit. I take one, I'm down to 19. Okay. Yeah, this is unfortunate, but I gotta kind of jump through these hoops. So I'm gonna tap three to cast Stab Wound. Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature with minus two, minus two. At the beginning of that creature's upkeep, Enchanted Creature, that player loses two life. Okay. Stab Wound that thing. Okay, so now it's a one one. Yeah. So now you have, you have mana up still. Yeah, so I'm gonna burn through my creatures here. No, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. Because okay. this will be returned to my hand anyway. Yeah. So now. Did you want to wait till the beginning of the upkeep on my turn to do it? And then um, I lose an additional two life? Or do you want to just do it now just to be... Because uh, it's untapped yeah. upkeep, so it's up to you. Yeah, sure. Okay. So this is still tapped. Untapped, upkeep, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. And then you have that untapped. Yeah. Okay. So then it's... Oh, wait. I, I still get it. But I already passed. So we're good. Oh, no. You get to play. You, it's you just can, a tap yeah, left. sure. It's your sec second main phase. Yeah. So. Yeah, because I basically sort of like threw me off threw you by off. giving yeah. me good advice. <laughs> now that you have to return something yeah. in your hand, right? Okay. Right. So there we go. So you played the basilica. Basilica. Where's our basilica? We're all a little frazzled. <laughs> Things just aren't <laughs> it's right. It's been a long, crazy night for us. So a lot longer than than will be for you guys when you watch it. Okay. So now untap. Untap. <laughs> upkeep. Beginning upkeep. of my upkeep. I'm gonna take two. So I'm down to seventeen. Okay. Once he's done his thing, I will spend that one. Sacrifice a creature, target creature minus one. So I'm going to sacrifice that. 
Spirit, give him minus one. That goes to your grave. This goes to my grave. Yeah. I'm then going to draw. I will, and I will pay two to prevent you from, from getting a treasure token. Okay. I am then going to play an island. I'm going to tap the island, tap the signet for two, and tap this for one white. I'm going to cast Stoic Ephemera. It is a 5-5 spirit. It's got Defender and Flying, uh, but when it blocks, sacrifice it at the end of combat. Uh, that's my turn, and I'm going to pass the turn now to you. Okay. Untap. Draw. So I tap this and tap that. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If I play that land. So I'm going to play that land. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'll tap this, tap this, <laughs> tap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. That's that's math, man. So hopefully that is math. This. I'm going to do another enchantment. Uh, Debtor's Kneel. Okay. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. At the beginning of your upkeep? Yep. Oh, wow. So I have to get rid of that soon. If Otherwise, you can grab one of any of my creatures, right? Yep, I have my Ministry of Obligation there, too. Oh, that's right, too, yeah. Uh, that did tap me out. Um, do I want to trade my... <laughs> no, I think I'll just pass to you. Okay, on your but end I mean, step... Actually, I should have, because I'm going to the back, but it's all good. Okay. On your end step, I'm going to tap for two. I'm going to cast Azorius Charm, and I'm going... Yeah, I can choose one, either creatures you control gain, lifelink to the end of turn, put target attack and or blocking creature on top of its own library, or I can draw a card. I'm going to draw a card, because I really need to draw a card at this point. So you can't spend your... Oh, that's right, too. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. so for sure. For sure, for sure. <laughs> I always forget about that, yeah. Okay, so uh, my turn now. Untap. Draw. Uh, I will pay two to prevent you from treasure tokening up. I'm going to... Pay two for another Signet. I'm then going to pay one, tap the Signet for two, and then tap this Guildgate for two more. I'm going to cast Court Hussar. Um, it's, we saw it before, but just to remind everyone, because it's been a while, at least for us anyways. Uh, Vigilance, one, three. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards in my library, then put one of them into my hand and the rest in the bottom of the library in any order. Um, and white was uh, spent to cast it, so I don't have to sacrifice it, so I'm going to look at the top three. Put those two on the bottom of my library. Put this one in my hand. Travis, mm -hmm. it's all you, sir. It is all you. Okay. Untap. Upkeep. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield. So you have a 3-3 three, three flyer that does something pretty cool? I have a 3-3 three, three flyer yeah. that uh, uh, whenever it attacks, you may return target creature card or creature defending player controls with toughness two or less, to its owner's hand. Pride of Clouds, which gets better for, based on the number of flyers you have. And then Judge's Familiar, which is the one one that can be sacrificed to make enchantments and sorceries more difficult to cast. Mm. Or Afterlife 2. <laughs> yeah. Which basically with this on the board, you can keep bringing that back, and then you can sack it. And yeah. bring it back and sack it, right? So... Read your flyers. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I actually am going to target my Okay. So I'll return these to my grave. Sorry. Keep in hand. No, that's no problem. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> uh, untap, upkeep, draw. Okay. Uh, I'm going to play an Orzhov Guild Gate, which will enter tapped. So I am going to tap for a black, a white, and anything. That's tap. Okay. To cast. Uh, Pillory of the Sleepless. Enchanted oh. creature. Enchanted creature can't attack or block and has at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life. And I put that on the wall. Oh, okay. No, that makes sense. Now, yeah, because it's not when a spell targets it, it's when it blocks this thing. Yeah. Sacrifice, yeah. So I'm going to lose one life per. It's very similar to uh, 1,000 lashes, 1,000 lashes. So. Yeah. One, two, three. 
cast uh, Tesla Orzov Scion. So she's a legendary creature, human advisor for one black, one white, one of anything, three mana. She's a 2 3. I can sacrifice three white creatures, exile target creature. Whenever another black creature I control dies, create a 1 1 white spirit creature token with flying. Okay. I am Hellbent. You're Hellbent? And this is the only one without summoning sickness, right? Correct. Okay. Would you <laughs> like want... to attack? No, I won't attack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's my turn? Yeah. Okay. So untap. Draw. Interesting. It becomes an interesting choice now because I'm hellbent with no mana sinks on the board. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there is such a thing, especially in a deck that has potential for uh, extort. Excessive mana can be really bad. Okay, I'm going to spend two to prevent you from, from creating another treasure. Okay. I am then going to pay two and then tap these two to create two white, two blue. And I'm going to cast Sphinx of New Prov. Uh, four, three, Flying Vigilant Sphinx. Spells your opponent's cast that target Sphinx of New Prov cost two more to cast. Oh, as well, too, on the upkeep, I almost missed it. Uh, I do lose one life because of Pillory of the Sleep. So I'm down to 16. Uh, I'm sure someone in the comment section was already... Wrong. No, what have you done? Um, okay, so that is that. I'm going to play a planes, and I'm going to pass the turn to you. Untap. Upkeep. So upkeep trigger. This time I will take that... Uh, the 3-3? Three, three? The 3-3, three, three. yeah. Skymark Rock. Skymark Rock. So whenever he attacks, I may return a target feature with defending... Like those toughness for two or less. You don't have a lot of those things. No, but you, this. you, you want to return this. the Hazard of my hand, you go right in. It's toughness two or less. His toughness is three. Oh, wait, it's toughness two or less? Yeah. I thought it was attack two or less. I, I... No, 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 I'm sure, it's your, I'm sure you're right. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, hey, 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 hey. It's That's a three, three, five. Better than I thought it was, so, okay. Okay. So I draw my card for turn. I am going to play my card. I tend to anyway. For black and white, I'm going to play... Zapoka Guild Mage. Okay. Um, I'm going to do some stuff. Okay, go for it. Tap for black. Sacrifice creature. Target creature is minus one, minus one, then a turn. Okay. Sacrifice this. Give that minus one, minus one. Okay. So if that happens, I get two. Now these guys. So that was one white. Um, nothing happened. <laughs> I get two okay. white and black. Yeah. Okay. He has minus one. Yeah. He's using a bit. Okay. Um, let's put another black, sacrifice a creature, give him minus one, minus one. Now okay. this is a white and black one, so I will create a one, one white spirit. So these guys are the white guys only. Okay. Okay, you're gone. I will tap another one, <laughs> sacrifice this guy to give him minus one, minus one, one. And that is going to kill him. That gives me three, or two more in the second one. Yeah, those are white. Those are just, those just, are white. just white. Yeah, straight up white. I think I'm going to pass to you at this point. So my turn? Your turn. Okay. On tap. I think I am kind of doomed to this game, but we will see. So I'm going to draw. You got so many signets, dude. You can, you can be um, taxing yourself to the end of time. You know what? I'm going to pay two. Oh, you know what I'm going to do instead? I'm going to actually... Tap a planes and tap a signet for two to pay pay the the tithe. I'm gonna play a planes. Oh, sorry. Oh yes, and I take one. Thank you for reminding me. No, no problem. So I'm down to fifty. I forget how to turn. I'm going to tap this island. Oopsie. Tap this island. Tap down the signet. So now I got white blue, and now I've got another white blue. So I got two white, two blue. I'm going to cast Azorius Justicar. Uh, when enters the battlefield, detain up to two target creatures your opponent control. Until your next turn, the, these creatures can't attack, block, and their activated abilities can't be activated. So I'm going to detain that and that. Because they're the only ones with activated abilities as well. And while that's on the stack, mm -hmm. I don't want to... Ping, ping. No, I'm fine. You're fine? Okay. And then I'm going to... That's arena tapping. 
<laughs> um, I'm going to pass the turn to you. Okay. Um, nothing I can or want you on your end step, so untap. They're still... They're thinged. Um, I can activate this then on your turn. So right. that's the upkeep trigger for... Uh, yep, at the beginning okay. of my upkeep, yeah. uh, perturbed creature card from Graveyard. How about your fourth reflex? Yeah, with Vigilance, and uh, it's more difficult to... Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. I think, I'm pretty sure I'm doing this game, but we'll see. We'll, we'll play it out just to, just to okay. see. Uh, just actually, for giggles. I do draw a card as well. It's a swamp. You know, not to be a dick. What would be really nice right now is to have one of those uh, sacrifice and then deal one... Deal one damage? Yeah, like that vampire who, I, who I'm undervaluing, I think. Because then it'd make more sense being this guy because you can just constantly yeah. bring him back and be hitting you like life loss, life gain. Again, I'm still in a good position, but that would be nice right now. I'm, I'm, I mean, her ability as well, too, is what, sacrifice three white creatures and then exile a creature? So I was a little surprised you didn't still go for the guy with uh, Afterlife. Yeah, but... but I, for once, I want to have like, power in the air. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess I'm going to go to combat. Okay. Okay, so you have a 2-2 two, two, and a 1-3. Mm -hmm. So you guys could double block, get rid of her, I don't want her gone. Okay. Of course, I could still, an instant speed. <laughs> Be a dick about things. <laughs> uh, I'm actually just going to attack with... These are spirits that are flying. You have no flying blockers. I have no flying blockers, no. So, no vigilance. I'm attacking for 5 power in the air. So, uh, do you choose to return? Uh, you don't have any... Oh, I do not choose to return. Okay. It's, it's a May ability. <laughs> it is a May ability. May ability. I didn't Tennis think you two. wanted the, the detainer there. Okay. No. So, you're swinging for four? Five. One, one, and three. Oh, three. That's right, too. Okay, so five. So, I'm down to ten. Okay. Pass to you. Pass to me. So, now these two, my mana sinks, <laughs> are undetained. <laughs> yes, they're undetained. Uh, I'm going to take one. From the uh, Pillory of the Sleepless, I'm going to draw. I don't really think treasure at this point is a huge deal, so I'm not. I'll, I'll allow you to grab a treasure token. Ding. Okay, so then I'm going to tap the Chancery for two, tap both my Signets for a total of four, and I'm going to cast Spirit of the Spires. It is a two-four uh, creature with flying, flying. Um, other creatures you control with flying get plus zero, plus one. I'm then going to tap for one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to cast uh, Wind Reaver. It is a one, three elemental creature with flying. And um, I can pay one white. Uh, it gains vigilance until the end of turn. I can also pay one white. It gains plus zero, plus one at the end of turn. I can pay one blue. Switch its power and toughness until the end of turn. Pay one blue, return it to its owner's hand. And because of the spire or spirit of the spires, it is now a one four. That is my turn, and I'm hell bent as well too. I still think I'm, I'm going to lose this game because you could basically machine gun. I think my guys down at this point. A little bit. Yeah. But... Okay. Uh, so nothing I'm going to do on the end step. I don't think at this point. Okay. Uh, I'll sacrifice a creature. I'm not in the mood to sacrifice anybody. Because nothing significant has two power. So I can't just ping ping. Mm -hmm. uh, so except this is my turn. Okay. <laughs> with those guys now. Uh, untap. Upkeep. So I am actually going to take my Ministrant of Obligation. Okay. Okay. Draw for turn. So we're going to sacrifice three white creatures. All right. These white creatures I'm going to sacrifice. Okay. Using her ability. That dude is the target. Okay. At this point. So I have So this is exiled as well too, right? It exiles the creature? Exile. Yeah. Okay. Now um So those all go to the bin, which means the spirit goes away for good. Yeah. But you're gonna gain was it two black and white spirit two tokens? Black and white spirit tokens. And this dies as well. That goes now, as... this one is a black and white creature token. So okay. whenever another black creature I control dies, create a one one white spirit token. Okay. So these three all have summoning sickness. Yes. You are just in the bin. Okay. Uh, tap a black and a white to cast the Viscopa Golden oh, yeah. Mage. Yeah. That's why I chose that guy, because he's black and white and I had a, I had a replacement. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to combat. Okay. 
I'm going to attack with uh, these three guys. There's one one flyer, three three flyer, four three flyer. I'm going to block the three three with this. I'm going to pay one white to give it plus zero plus one to make it a one four. Make it a one four. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to tap that to sacrifice this. Mm -hmm. Or to sacrifice, to sacrifice this guy, mm. um, who is a black and white, to give that minus one, minus one. Yep. Okay. So that goes away, but I do still create, because the black creature that died, so I create a white. Yeah. Because okay. one of the things I should point out as well, too, because it's probably going to be mentioned at this point, is that you could have, you can probably exile my entire board. But I have to sacrifice at this point. a lot of my stuff. To do yeah, that. but keep in mind, every time you sacrifice a black creature, you gain a white. Yeah. So, but... So this is this is gonna so I so said now we go to combat damage? Uh no, because I'm gonna uh give it stuff some life link here. Okay. So uh one, two, three. Target creature gains life link. Oh, I thought it was all creatures. No. Mind. Okay. Um well still that's four. Okay. So okay. that's gonna gain lifelink. And then one, two, and then sacrifice that for three. So whenever I gain life this turn, each point loses that much life. Okay. So that's also on, obviously, the guy I gave life link to. Well, that's just a static effect, isn't it? It's not on. Oh, it's yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, yeah. But he's the only one with life link, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So he's blocked. Yeah. So this is going to die. Yeah. And then the spirit's going to do one to me. This is going to do four, so it's five in total. But you're going to gain four life, and I'm going to lose an additional four, so I'm down. So I'm dead. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's no I'm problem. This I, I know. I was, I was trying to like, 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 not speed it up necessarily, yeah. but being out of hand, and and I was just like, I was surprised you didn't just exile, like the flyer, the one thing that could, like, initially exiling it would have been difficult because I could have tapped it to return it to my hand. But even then, once no it's blocker. returned to my yeah, hand, pre-combat, yeah. that would have been yeah. good too, actually. Yeah. So, but as well, to keep in mind, this has been a very long yeah. night for us because you guys will have only seen this one, but we have been playing for. Hours, which is usually fun until yeah. uh, you realize it's because someone stopped, uh, forgot to turn the cameras on. So and, and once again, like I have tonight is the first time I played this game. I've seen it played, but this is the first time I played the, de the deck. Yeah, not yeah, the game. This, yeah, this deck, this yeah. game, <laughs> <laughs> English. So yeah, I mean, it's these aren't like our usual decks kind of thing. Yeah, like so. I mean, certain things are pretty easy, but I'm not. I've never really played much Orzov, and Orzov in the past. Yeah. So. No, that was good. I mean, I honestly thought it was going to go... Um, if if I don't end up posting the game that Westry was on camera, this was underwhelming. I thought it was going to go similar to that one. And basically... It was starting the, that way. The way that game worked out is I had a 1-1 the, a one -one flyer, a 2-2 two -two flyer. They got pumped up to a 2-2 two -two and a 3-3. Three -three, and then it was just... Travis had nothing to to block it for the entire game. And I thought, I thought, oh, this is going to be almost a carbon copy of that. But then everything started swinging your way, which is great. So, which is honestly, because I'll be a hundred percent honest with you, because we did not record the actual third game in which you won, uh, you you definitely deserved the win. Orzov deserved the win. So I do this a lot. I get way too focused on what I'm doing that I don't even look at the life total and do the math there. Sometimes, like sacrifice, yeah. do this when really, no, you're right. I could have <laughs> because the other thing as well too is like one, I was tapped out except for one. Yeah, which which I mean gave me. Any option of one of these, yeah, but not re two. Removing the flyer, which I either would exile it, or if to Brendan for me exiled, return it to my hand. That would have been pretty much the end of it, and then you could have swung in with any flyers that you wanted at that point. So, but yeah, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I was didn't. No, no, we got there in the end. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just delayed stuff. Once again, lot. it's it's been a very very long game, and it, and it and uh, this is the first time you played the Orzov deck. So um, yeah, but uh, I am. I mean, obviously, I never like losing, no. but uh, I am kind of happy that this is how it ended in the in the very end of this. Not the crazy aggro, a aggro versus Basilla versus Basilla. Oh, I just meant the doors up one. Yeah. That like because honestly, at this point, it, it definitely deserved it given uh, how everything went and uh, behind the cameras. So, um, so Travis. Any sort of final thoughts on the two decks? I think Orzov actually has a very good chance of going right to the finals of this because I find Orzov to be one of the stronger decks, if not the yeah, strongest it, deck out of all. It's those. got good synergy amongst its cards. And it's got pieces there to work. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, if I had a bit better, uh, if I had one of those, either uh, I can't think of that now. Uh, Extort earlier. Oh yeah. When it, yeah. at one point for a few rounds, I've had a lot of mana, not a heck of a lot to do with it. Or that uh, we'll just call it the Blood Artist, like Vampire. Yeah. 
it vindictive been, vampire. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah, vindictive vampire. Yes. It yeah, because that is. It's basically uh, whenever one of your creatures die, you gain a life. I lose a life. Yeah, and so you, you can really start machine. Once gunning. you have that sack out, there, yeah. Like she was well, nuts. Two sack outlets, actually. Yeah, but, but she, she didn't kept cost anything. Stuff back. Yeah. yeah, she didn't cost anything. And whenever it was a whenever a black creature died, and you had so many white black creatures that it was yeah. like you could sacrifice three creatures, gain three creatures back. They would have all been like white spirit creature tokens. Sacrifice them all again. I mean, right there, that's six damage. Yeah. If you had the like the vindictive vampire on there, so uh, yeah, this I th- once Orzov gets going, I think it's very difficult to to stop it. Um, I think. Any of the decks that go up against it, the ones that are going to do the best are going to be anything that has board wipes. Yeah. But even then, it's going to have to be board wipes that are executed before you have something like the Vindictive Vampire. Because you can respond. I'll respond yeah. to that by I'll sack this. I'll or you can just let them all die and then it's not going to matter, right? Yeah. So it's just, it's just I'm going to take a boatload of damage just from wiping out your entire board. And anything's got good enchantments, but when you wipe the creatures out, we still have two solid enchantments there. Yeah. I mean... The, the That's enchant- really hard to get rid of, too. Tithe was really good, especially when you're sort of strapped for mana. <laughs> I'm seeing Tithe at the yeah, end of my... Yeah. Well, this feels like karma, because I'm getting that one card that And was, we never you know, saw it before that. And then all no. of a sudden, the last three trouble games... Uh, we, I've got a funny feeling I'm going to see it in some time. of your uh, commander decks, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, a, it was a, great, it's a great card. I think it's a really great card. Uh, also, and the, um, the one enchant we hadn't seen before was the one which, on your upkeep, you could take a creature yeah. from the graveyard from a graveyard yeah. and put it onto the battlefield. Like once that hit, I was like, oh, I don't think I have any enchantment removal. I don't have any sort of like permanent re- bounce removal. Um, so yeah, I was, I, I could see it happening. It was just a matter of when I actually died versus if I was going to die at that point. So. Yeah. But once again, I, I, I'm, I'm not surprised Orzov won because I was kind of thinking Orzov would win. I'm not disappointed because uh, it had already happened off camera. So, uh, so yeah. So I appreciate you sticking through this. Oh, no problem. <laughs> incredibly long recording session that was plagued with problems. And um, uh, just before we go, I'm going to just plug it because I plug it every single time. The Token of the Month Club is a thing I've created where there is a, a new token exclusive to Brain Pulp TV created for the channel each and every month. And you guys can sign up for it and get between one to ten of these tokens sent directly to your door in the mail. It's being run through Patreon because it's just easy as far as the back end goes with, with collecting like the, the addresses and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, eventually, I'm hoping to get my own sort of store set up. Haven't had it set up yet. If Because there's been comments about this. If anyone is interested in any of the past tokens, just email me. My email address is down below uh, on the screen here. And uh, I will definitely hook you up some of the past tokens. But in the meantime, check it out and see if it's your cup of tea. Travis. Thank you so much again for for coming. Thank you guys for watching, uh, and we will see you all in the next video.